This video will describe the process I used to build the components for the HO scale model of the Lamy Depot. The printer I use is an any cubic photon and I use gray any cubic resin. Each resin has its own settings so once I use the program that comes with the printer I set those up in the slice program. The build plate must also be leveled. There are videos on YouTube that show this but it is very important that the settings be specific for the resin and that the build plate is leveled. This video will demonstrate how I designed and printed the bathroom wall section for the Lamy Depot. Prior to this, I have measured the building and drawn HO scale elevations and a floor plan. This will give me the measurements for each wall section. I used Tinkercad for my design program and it is calibrated in millimeters, but you can probably change that to whatever you want. I measured the width of the wall section in inches and then converted that to millimeters. The height of the wall and the location and dimensions of the windows were taken off the drawings. With Tinkercad, you start with a shape and then correct the dimensions to match your design. Starting with a three-dimensional red box, I adjust the measurements of the box to match the wall section including the width of the wall which is 3.16 millimeters. The actual walls are 16 inches thick and this scales down accurately enough when brick is applied to the interior walls. After the wall size is correct, holes must be placed for the windows. Taking another box, this one is the hole shape, I adjust the measurements for that to match the openings for the windows. As you can see, I've already designed the actual window frame using the same technique that I've used for the wall. The ruler is used to place the hole for the window at the proper position. Sometimes the measurements of the drawing don't look right, so I have to check it against the photograph that I've taken when I was out measuring the building. After I get the window locations correct, I highlight the wall section and click on the group function. That places the holes in the wall for the window frame. Next I move the window frame into the hole in the wall and correctly place it where it belongs. I make sure that it looks right by moving the wall around to look at all possible views and adjusting it as I needed. This wall will be a joining wall, so I cut a 45 degree angle on the ends of the walls to fit with a 45 degree angle on the adjoining walls. Next I import the wall section into the slice program. I'm also printing another previously designed wall section at the same time. It's more efficient to print as much as possible at the same time. Note all the settings for this particular resin on the right side of the screen. Once the parts are positioned correctly on the slice program, click the slice icon and select the destination for the file. For some reason the program won't save the correct file type so I have to type .pws after the file name. Save it to the destination that you select and then copy and paste it onto the thumb drive that goes with the printer. Don't save it directly to the thumb drive because you will want a copy of the file on a good drive and the thumb drive that is provided with a printer is of poor quality. First thing I'm going to do is put this um, thumb drive in. I'll open it up. This is the inside of it.
nice and clean. <clears throat> when you're working with this resin, it's important to wear gloves and wear a mask because the resin can be carcinogenic. And here we go. Gloves, mask, right? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, make sure everything is clean, make sure that there's no defects or anything on the bottom of the reservoir here. <clears throat> we have to shake up the resin. <clears throat> There's a line in here, which is right along here, which shows the level that you want the resin to be filled to. You don't want to fill it higher than that. Otherwise, the build plate may go down and cause the resin to overflow and you'll have a huge mess to clean up. <clears throat> Carefully put the reservoir in and there's two screws one on each side to tighten it into place. Next, we'll put the build plate on. The build plate has been previously leveled, so we don't have to worry about that. Perhaps in another video, I'll show you how to do that. Tighten it. Now we'll turn on the printer. It's booting up. When the menu comes up, you go to print, and you scroll down to find the file that you want. It's usually the last file. And there it is. It says West and East Middle Windows. We'll select that file. That's what we want. And then we'll hit print. Build plate goes down into the vat of reservoir, or into the uh, vat of resin in the reservoir. <clears throat> and it will take 21 minutes according to the calculations which you can see down there for this to be finished so we're going to close this because it prevents ultraviolet light from coming in which is what cures the resin and we'll come back in a little bit and we'll see what we've got okay 20 minutes later we're back I'll put my gloves back on these are small and they don't fit very well but right now they're better than nothing <clears throat> barely better than nothing put the mask on alright so we're going to rinse these in alcohol so we'll put some alcohol in this little dish here. That removes the residual resin from the model. Open up the door here and I'll bring this over so we can see a little bit better. So, when it comes off, when it gets done printing, the build plate will rise back up. And you can see that the two models are stuck to the build plate, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. I just let the uh, residual resin drain off here. Another container down here on the floor that I will scoop 
the rest of that into. I'm just using this little spatula here to remove as much of the resin as we can because we can reuse it. There's no reason to waste it. So, the most difficult part about this process is removing these guys from the build plate. And the way you do that is you just kind of hit it with the spatula and they usually end up flying all over the place. of the resin off the build plate and then I also wipe it off. After a while I'll clean it but right now I just want to get the resin off of it. <clears throat> and we retrieve our models from wherever in the world they went. Put it in the alcohol. Find the other one. see already that they came out really nice. That window detail in there is perfect. Just pour this back in here. And then we'll take it inside, we'll wash it off, and then these have to be cured under ultraviolet light for not very long. But uh, since I don't actually have a device that um, has UV light, I just take it and put it outside in the sun. So we'll run outside real quick and do that. Ditch these gloves. <clears throat> um, we'll turn the printer off, close it up for now. Let's just get rid of the alcohol and anything else that's stuck to the part. And I'll show you how I do this. Now, these don't. Parts are pretty thick, so they're not going to um, warp. But some parts that are real thin have a tendency to warp. So I put a piece of glass over the top of it and put it in the sun like that. And usually, like five, ten minutes per side is more than adequate. <clears throat> Those look really good. I can hardly wait to see what they look like. Okay, so we'll leave them there for a minute and then we'll uh, run them up to the model and just kind of put them in place and see what they look like.